Welcome to our yoga chats with me, your host, Greg Walsh. Today, our guest is the wonderfully gifted senior anger teacher, Melanie Taylor, who I'm lucky to be able to call my friend. I did my anger training with you, Mel, uh, 2000 to 2002, I think. Yeah. It doesn't feel like a long time ago, but I guess it is. And I have to say, and you might know this, but um, you've always been a bit of a yoga inspiration to me, the way you have cried away at the Iyengar coal face for all of those years. So, Melanie Taylor, thank you for joining us today. Hi, Greg. Yes, it's been a long journey and it continues, which is great, isn't it? It does. It does continue. Yeah, yeah. yoga yeah. keeps going. And I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. So... And let's see what you have to say. So you've been a Nyinger teacher since 2002. And I'd love to know what drew you to the practice and what now, 20 plus years later, because of course you would have done years before that, uh, what keeps you with the practice? I think that the, pra the drawing me to it was a lot of lucky circumstances. Um, our, our teacher, who we shared, Elizabeth, was visiting Dublin and, come, and the training was known about by various people I knew. And I just sort of turned up there and there was this amazing woman who, you know, her first words pretty much at every class was, well, what are you saving yourself for? <laughs> what are you saving yourself for? That. that was so good. <laughs> that was so good. You, my... my um, my first memories, not my first memories, but one of my abiding memories of, uh, was, of the training with Elizabeth was she didn't think I was good enough at the start to be on the training. I really got that sense. She made it very clear. She wasn't, uh, she didn't mince words. And uh, so often it was, okay, come out of the pose and come over to see how not to do it, as she would circle around me. <laughs> Yes, and, and you know, always starting in Supta Virasan. And I mean, interesting, like you say, about how we continue with the practice, but that's the sort of thing is where a pose, you know, that, that from those early days, it was a sort of, it burnt into you because we always started there. And she kept us there for a long time. And she told us she was going to keep us there for a long time and went off doing all her chats. And, you know, you did, you just, you sweated blood in that pose almost. But, you know, all these years of Subta Virasan, it is a pose which, you know, you learn to live it, you learn to live it. And in those early days, how would we ever have understood that? You know, it was a, it was getting into that shape of that pose and, and you know, feeling whatever you felt, just holding it rather than allowing it, you know? So, I mean, I think that for me is the most amazing thing about the yoga practice is, is, you know, how it moves in your life, how your life is, you know, informed by your yoga practice, or for me it is anyway. I, I, I feel yeah. that, you know, the connection that I have over these years with, with you, with, with our whole group of yogis that we all still practice together, we all still find workshops and find ourselves in workshops together, or, you know, it's, it's been... It is my life. I can't say any different. Yeah, that is. Yeah, I can absolutely relate to that. And I know some of my regulars uh, will be going right. That's where he got his <laughs> uh, obsession. But I love getting it's one of my favorite poses, it's not one of my easiest poses, but I love getting mm. into it and just sinking my teeth into it and mm. staying mm. In, in it mm. for, for a period. Yeah. So one of the core tenets of Iyengar yoga is the use of props. And it's something which Iyengar yogis also get slagged about, uh, like the joke we posted on Instagram recently about how many Iyengar yogis does it take to uh, change a light bulb? Have you heard that joke, by the way? I, I've, I've known that joke also almost as long as I've known you, Greg. I'm sorry. <laughs> you probably told it to me. <laughs> I probably did, yes. Would you like to tell us the punchline for those who are, uh, are, are unfamiliar with well, how many props have you got? <laughs> how many light bulbs do you need changing? <laughs> I've got them all here in the corner. Chairs, yeah. bolsters. <laughs> That's a very right. Yeah. But joking yeah. aside, there is a logic to the props, which is much bigger than just propping us up. Yeah. Um, I remember years and years ago, a teacher I knew uh, saying, being skating about Iyengar yoga and saying, 
it's just using a brick in uh, periwinkle tree canasana. I was like, I think there's more than that, but I think at no at this stage I could probably answer a little better. I could, uh, you know, the way you you get um, you, you have a conversation with someone and afterwards you mull over it and think, oh, if only I'd said that, I could have. But anyway, uh, can you clarify your prop philosophy? Well, I mean, I think that um, you know, first of all, your body is a prop, you know. So you add to your understanding of your body by supporting it where it, where in places where, you know, perhaps the access isn't there. And I mean, yeah, it's a really good question. Why, why do we do it with props, you know? And, and when do we do our practice with props? Um, I mean, I think that this whole experience of Zoom and of online yoga for people practicing at home ha has made sense of the props because in your own home, you have had to go out and find, <laughs> look around and find a piece of furniture to sit on or a cushion or a wall. And so it's really the, the you know, where it came from, as we know the story with Guruji finding a brick in the street and seeing how that brick for somebody who had an issue with, I don't know, maybe that couldn't straighten their arm when they stretched their arm forward on the floor, you know, put something under the elbow to help, to give a lift. He, you know, all of the props that we have are only everyday items in life. You know, those amazing ones, the chumbles, which we don't have a lot of them here, and certainly not now, <laughs> they're in studios, you know, which were used by women to carry the, um, the water on their heads. And, uh, you know, that, that, that was the, they say, isn't it, the final prop of Guruji's that was used. That's it, that we one. need the jumble. Yeah. So that's how yeah. it started. Yeah. On the yeah. head. Yeah. yeah. I love these. Uh, my knees are good these days, but when I was having knee trouble, take these into the back of the knees because they're only mm. the width of your knees, so they don't get mm. in the way, but they're really nice and dense, so mm. they, they ratchet your joint open mm. a little. Mm. I mean, they, mm. they work like a fulcrum to keep space in the joint. Yeah, uh, yeah. I used to use in Subdivarasana, I don't need to now, but yeah. the odd time in uh, Padmasana, I yeah, still, yeah. yeah, they're brilliant. Yeah. And I had to bring them home when I was in Pune because they were called chumbles. Um, yeah. When I heard the name, I thought they were actually chumblies. And, chumblies. Uh, chumblies. <laughs> <laughs> so I went off and bought my chumblies, yeah. but just yeah. because they're such a cute name, but they're also yeah. a really handy prop. Yeah. yeah, no, but I mean, that's exactly it. You see that, that, that really, you know, as I say, you, your body is a prop. Things in your home are, are, can be used as props. And it's not, you know, again, I remember last year when the first sort of online experiences and we all were able to do some amazing workshops with Indian teachers, yes, which we would have planned before five, six years planning to go to India to be able to be there with that teacher and suddenly there was Abhijata in our living room you know in my living room I, I, and, and I, it just was a most incredible sort of opportunity suddenly presenting himself through this awful pandemic but anyway the first class with her we did I remember really vividly she took bolsters and she had us in Adamukha Virasan in a lot of forward bends actually, but she kept saying, embrace, embrace the support, embrace the support. Okay, this was a bolster, but that's it. It's like with the prop, they're not separate from you. You know, you're not just taking something outside of yourself to add something outside of yourself. You're actually taking that support to bring yourself more in, to bring awareness more into the body, into the places that it can't get. You know, if you, li if you put a lift, like I said, that thing of the brick under the elbow mm. in Adamukha Virasan, then suddenly the, the arm, the upper arm has a, has a different channel of energy. And it's all about that to me. It's just, you know, the, the yoga is about finding out about more about yourself through your practice. You know, it's, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a practical method to um and, and what we have around us is our practical things our lives are full of practical things too many in a way but too if many, we can but, yeah. take those things and use them to you know 
to learn more about how to live, then how how amazing, how wonderful. And it, and that to me is what's been so fantastic in a way with the Iyenga practice adapting to Zoom is that it has been so possible. And maybe in the past, you know, that thing of, oh, all our yoga yogas, just how many props have you got? Maybe that is now no longer relevant anymore because people have had a chance to understand in their own home, on their own mat, in their own practice, what it means to connect with themselves without a teacher in front of them telling them, I mean, that you obviously are teaching them online, but you're not, you're not able to adjust people anymore. People have to you know, individually find out. Why was that suggested to me, you know? And, oh gosh, if I touch, if I put my arm up a little higher and use that shelf that, you know, has got all my knickknacks on it, gosh, look, I can get an opening in my armpit that I didn't really understand. However many times, you know, I think a lot of times it's about that repeating, you know, repeating of, of the practice of the poses, um, just by clockwork it's no it's not yoga isn't that you know i mean the the famous prashant saying you know yoga's a work in not a work out yeah it's a lovely expression prashant has some great great mm, expressions mm, yeah mm. um our trainer elizabeth Connolly recommended that we do ashtanga yoga to pass our Iyengar assessments and uh, we went along with it at the time i don't think we fully realized uh well it got her in a lot of trouble. And um, Iyengar yoga is, uh, it's like monotheism, it's monopracticism. So it's a very Indian approach, I think. Having been over there a few times, they, they do work one way, but over here people tend to, um, to move around much more. So you have not wavered from your Iyengar roots since I have known you. So what is it like to stick to one practice and one practice only for over 20 years? Do you know, it's funny in a way, I mean, I, I, I think because it's limitless. I think because that is what, you know, Guruji was about really. And, and I mean, I, I um, <clears throat> have a teacher as, who I'm practicing with a lot at the moment, Zubin, is one of the senior teachers from, from Mumbai. And, you know, he, he always um, expresses some interesting things, interesting thoughts to me. And he, he was talking about Guruji and, and light on yoga and saying, you know, this is, I'm just answering as best as best I can here, but you say, you know, most people in life are, are good at one thing. And, and in a way in your practice, you know, you're good, or oh, I'm good at back bends, but when it comes to doing forward bends, obviously you're, you're not. Whereas, you know, you only have to look at light on yoga. You only have to have really had any experience of, of Guruji's teachings in any way. To realize that this man, you know, he manifested everything in, in every pose that he did, he manifested everything. And I suppose for me, the thing is that, you know, obviously I, I, Uruji, I never met him. I have been to India. I've experienced those great teachers that, from India, but from also all the teachers around us, you know, that, that have been to India and absorbed it. The senior teachers in the UK is amazing. So I feel that that's what it has been. It's, it's just a, a gift that keeps on giving Iyengar for me, you know. But I completely, I think also that, you know, it embraces, the practice is not just the physical, as we know. So, you know, it comes from the philosophical tenets of yoga where, you know, all yoga is based. So it, it isn't labeled to me, it's not labeled. I don't think, of my, I, I obviously do follow you know, an Iyengar training I've been on, I, I, that is my qualification. But I feel I'm practicing, I feel it's yoga, you know. And I think Guruji said that as well. It's not, you know, he didn't like it to be, he didn't want it. It's not Iyengar yoga, it is, it's, it's yoga, you know. He didn't give it that name. That name no. was his followers. Yeah, yeah. in the end, yeah. yoga is yoga. Yoga is yoga. Yeah. And it's lovely. I love to see anyone practicing any yoga. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah. So, Mel, I have one more question for you. Yes. What takeaway can viewers bring home from our yoga chats today? What takeaway? Just keep practicing. And especially, you know, this op take the opportunity of having found a space for yourself in your own home um, to put your mat out and to, to find that time. Because, you know, it, it isn't just about having a teacher 
in front of you, you are your own teacher and, you know, in your own space. I, I think really, I suppose, for many years of teaching, and uh, I would have said that practically every class, I said, oh, well, try and practice to see you next week. And, and you would, you know, a lot of people say, well, I can't do that. I, I can't practice by myself. I mean, I need to know what I'm doing and I need, I need you to tell me what to do. But I mean, it doesn't mean it's not that. It's like find out more about what it means to practice yoga for you. <laughs> and you can. COVID, as awful as it has been, has provided us, exactly. many of my students who would never have even had a, any knowledge of how to open a computer before, to mm. find a space for yoga, which is mm. fantastic. In strange ways, it has been mm. a period of growth mm. Mm. among all of the challenges. Yes. So, Melanie, on behalf of all of our viewers, I'd like to thank you for coming to have these yoga chats today. Well, thank you. And uh, yeah, good yoga to everybody. <laughs> I, I agree. Absolutely. And that's all for now, folks. I'm Greg Walsh. Thank you for uh, watching. I hope you can uh, join me for more yoga chats again soon.